To celebrate the launch of Planet Coaster on Xbox and PlayStation consoles, I thought I would revisit the game on PC, but with a little twist. I'd like to build a park that grows kind of organically and in a somewhat historically accurate way, so to do this I've looked at every model of coaster in the game and decided what real life coaster it's based on. I've then listed them in order of when they were first built, so we've ended up with this list which we'll use to decide what to build next. I'll try and put some period appropriate flat rides down as well, and this way we'll start with classic wooden coasters and work our way towards the tallest, fastest and most modern coasters in existence. With each coaster type, as I build them I'll talk a bit about the coaster it's based on and my thoughts on their design, trying to make a somewhat realistic new design in that style. To get started, I've built a boardwalk area next to a lake in the middle of a park and I'll gradually expand out from this central hub. I've placed a few classic flat rides on the waterfront, along with some generic and Victorian scenery to make a nice starting point for our first coaster. In game, the ride model is called Hop the Gaps, so I've decided to name my version Jump the Bumps. It's pretty clear though that this ride is actually modelled on the oldest roller coaster still operating, which is called Leap the Dips, and it's based at Lakemont Park in Pennsylvania. This coaster opened all the way back in 1902, and it's got a breathtaking speed of 10 miles per hour. I've tried to keep my design within similar constraints, so it's not the most thrilling ride, but visually I think it looks quite good in this park. This style of roller coaster is known as a side friction roller coaster, as rather than the cars being securely attached to a rail, they actually run in a kind of gutter and have wheels mounted horizontally on the sides that guide them around the corners. I've sadly never ridden Leap the Dips, as any time I've been in the local area, the park's been closed or the ride's been temporarily shut, so the closest I've come to riding it is the rather strange slope shooter ride at Higashiyama Zoo in Japan. Hopefully one day I'll get to ride it though, as the current oldest coaster I've ridden is the Scenic Railway in Melbourne, which dates back to 1912. The main focus on today's video though is going to be building the next ride, which is the Zephyrus model in game, and it's likely based on the Cyclone at Luna Park in New York and similar boardwalk type roller coasters. That roller coaster dates back to 1927, but I'm actually going to draw most of my inspiration for this ride from another beachfront coaster that was built a couple of years earlier, the Giant Dipper at Belmont Park in San Diego. I'm mostly picking that coaster because I think the colour scheme will look really good in this park, especially with a large curved first drop. Again, I'm going to try and build this coaster in a reasonably realistic way, so the twists and turns won't be that extreme, but I should still be able to make a pretty fun ride. I want to place it in the centre of the park, behind the ferris wheel, and the station should fit nicely into this space here. I'm going to start off with a short pre-lift section that takes you around 180 degrees, and then have a fairly gentle lift hill of about 20 degrees. The coasters I'm basing this off, Cyclone and Giant Dipper, both have a height around 75 feet, so we'll start off with having a lift hill that reaches that height. When I'm building in Planet Coaster, there's often quite a lot of trial and error involved to see what works and what doesn't, so I'm going to speed things up here so I can focus on the more interesting parts. When I'm designing rides, I usually start out with only the roughest sort of idea as to what I want to build, and then let the coaster evolve a bit and see what fits into the space it has. I want to start this coaster out in a similar way to the Giant Dipper, where the first drop flows into the first hill, but because I'm trying to make quite a compact layout, we have to make a few tweaks along the way, as I don't want the bottom of the first drop to collide with the brake run. I've added a temporary bump here, so that should give enough clearance and I'll revisit that section later. When I've ridden the Giant Dipper and similar coasters, I've found that they didn't really have that much airtime, as the speed that they go over the hills at was just that bit too slow. Instead of airtime, the focus of these rides, as their name suggests, is on the dipper part, where the train accelerates down into dips after a slow turnaround or after cresting a hill. You have to remember that these coasters were hand built in a time long before computer aided design, and they were likely building upon what was known about side friction roller coasters, which lacked the upstop wheels that would stop the ride flying off the track when under negative G. I'd like my design to behave in a similar way, and after the first hill, what I'd like to build is a slow turnaround before another dip. After testing what I had however, it seemed like the first hill was being taken far too quickly, so I modified its curvature and size to make it a bit more realistic. Getting the speed correct for the turnaround also took a few tries, but eventually I managed to get it right and made something I was happy with. For the next section of track, I wanted to make an interesting visual for people watching the ride, where the ride would fly over the station building, and again this took a few tries to get right. 
With that visual element seeming to work quite well, I now felt like I was almost running out of space, and this would be a good point to bring the ride back into the station and end the circuit. After a few attempts, I managed to make a final corner that seemed to fit well, and this first version of the ride was now complete. It was now time to set the track colours. I wanted a classic red and white scheme, just like the Giant Dipper, but decided on a slightly paler shade, as if the paint had been bleached by a long time in the sun. Some nice blue railings finished off the ride, and I think the default train colours work really well with this colour scheme, fitting in nicely with the rest of the scenery. It was now time to build the ride station. Now this is a part of Planet Coaster that I've often struggled with, as it's not as interesting to me as designing the coasters themselves. I've kept the general design quite simple for this station, but hopefully it'll fit in with the rest of the area's aesthetic. It turned out that I'd misjudged the size of the roof tile slightly, so in order to make the coaster fit over the top I had to do a couple of extra tweaks. Next up was deciding on a name for the ride and creating a sign for it. As this was going to be very early in the park's development, something like Giant Dipper or even Big Dipper didn't seem right, as I know much more giant rides are still to come, so with that in mind, I decided to call it Moderate Dipper, and it was finally time to take it for a spin. After reviewing the ride, however, this version just didn't seem quite right, as when compared to the rides I based it on, it was far too short, measuring only 1400 feet, whereas the rides inspiring it were all around 2600 feet. It became clear that I needed to fit another lap in if I wanted to make it comparable, so it was time to dig a bit deeper into the ride structure in order to make the extra track fit. This would also have the added bonus that I might be able to make the ride run three trains at the same time, which to me always looks better, and also would help reduce any queues if they built up. I completely reworked the turn after the train goes over the station, and then took the track down close to the ground, fitting a couple more bumps in for added thrills. It would be a tricky balance of maintaining enough energy for the ride to make it back to the station, but still making a good ride, but I think it turned out okay in the end. As the train runs through and next to the wooden support structure of the coaster, this helps to give a good sensation of speed, with all the bits of wood flying past you, even though the train is slowing down and running out of energy. The final bumps may be a bit aggressive for this style of coaster, but on the whole I think it's turned out reasonably realistic. And so our park now has two coasters that I'm pretty happy with, and fit in nicely to the area, but the park still has a lot of growing to do, with at least another 50 or so coasters to be added. Next on the list as we move through coaster history will be the Aces Sky model, a wooden bobsled coaster based on the Flying Turns ride at Knobles, and after that will be the Wooden Wild Mouse, which I'm especially looking forward to building, as I really miss the one that used to be at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I'm struggling to come up with some good names for those rides though, so let me know your suggestions in the comments, and if there's anything else you'd like to see me build and discuss in this series. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon. <laughs>